Romeo and Juliet. Long story short, the play is about two teenagers from different feuding families who, spoiler alert, kill themselves out of love for one another only to emphasize this is why people with hate can't have nice things. Okay, so that's not the whole story, and probably not revealing all the crucial information of this classic play. But why in the world is it a classic? Why do we continue to see adaptations of these star-crossed lovers in our culture? Let's take, for example, West Side Story, Romeo and Juliet, Warm Bodies, Lion King 2, and my personal favorite, Romeo and Juliet with DiCaprio in it. Heck, what does star-crossed lovers even mean? Who came up with such a silly phrase? Shakespeare, you made that up? You can't just do that to us. But I digress. Let me sum up the story and you can jump into your own conclusions. So here we go. William Shakespeare's Romeo and Juliet. Firstly, the play opens with telling the entire story in 14 lines. And if you want to know more, you listen to the rest of the story. The City of Verona, where a brawl breaks out between the servants of the two rival families, the Montagues and the Capulets. A Montague servant bit his thumb at the Capulets, which is equivalent to giving the bird. <laughs> Here we meet Benvolio, Romeo's cousin, as he tries to break up the fight. We also meet Tybalt, Juliet's cousin, who provokes a more intense brawl and puts the fight back in action. The prince, who is neutral, barges in and stops the fight, and he is not happy. <sighs> These brawls have happened so many times that he says that the next time the fight breaks out between the two, they will be put to death. So dead. On the side, Benvolio briefly explains the ordeal to the Montague couple, and the couple also asks, Hey, where's Romeo? Later. Benvolio meets up with Romeo, who has been pouting all day about loving a girl who doesn't love him back. You know how teenagers are. Partly because she wants to say celibate. Pause. First lesson to the guys. If a girl decides to become a nun, drop the idea and move on. Romeo here is being whiny. He's trying to marry for the sake of love, rather than the political and monetary reasons for marriage that were popular at that time. Meanwhile at the Capulets, Daddy Capulet is chatting with mid-twenties year old Paris, just a Joe trying to convince Capulet to allow himself to marry Capulet's daughter Juliet who isn't even 14 yet. No big deal. Elsewhere, Romeo and Benvolio hear about a party from an illiterate messenger. Irony alert! They decide to go to the party so they can compare Romeo's lovesick crush to other girls. Back at the Capulets, Mama Capulet, Juliet, and her best friend Nurse chat about Juliet's marriage prospects, which is just Paris right now. Juliet isn't interested in getting married right now, but she'll act like it just to make appearances. Before the party, Mercutio, relative of the prince and best buddy of Romeo, have a chat about dreams and stuff. Romeo also foreshadows his own death. During the party. Also during the party. Tybalt spots Romeo and preps to kill him, and Daddy Cap busts in. No fights! Bad, Tybalt! Oh, fine, I'll kill him later. Romeo sees Juliet for the first time and forgets about the other girl. And what do boys in love do? They approach the object of their affections on the dance floor and begin spouting a sonnet, which Juliet compliments. One thing leads to another, and they're kissing. Next thing you know, Romeo realizes that Juliet's a Capulet, and has to leave with his bros. And Juliet realizes Romeo's a Montague. After the party. Romeo's bros head out for the night while Romeo lingers in hopes of seeing Juliet again. And voila! The famous balcony scene. I'm gonna skip this scene because it's long and lovey-dovey. If you care, you have internet. Essentially, he creeps on her while she's at her window, they declare their love, she proposes, and they're getting married. The next morning, Romeo meets up with Friar Lawrence and asks him to marry Romeo and Juliet. Friar thinks on one hand, Romeo is a lovesick teenager who wants to marry someone who he's known for less than a day. On the other hand, marrying the two lovebirds could bring peace between the two fighting families. Uh, fine, I'll do it. While chilling out with his bros, Romeo meets up with Nurse and talks about wedding plans. Holding the news torturously over Juliet's head, the nurse gets a back rub and then gives the wedding plan to her. Romeo and Juliet meet up briefly at the church for the wedding ceremony, kiss, and part ways. An hour later. After getting married, Romeo runs into Benvolio and Mercutio to also see an angry Tybalt wanting to fight him, probably for sneaking into the party last night. Romeo don't want no fight because he secretly knows Tybalt and he are in-laws now. Tybalt ends up fighting Mercutio instead, while Romeo tries to break them up. Because he doesn't think and gets in the way, Mercutio gets stabbed, curses the two families, then dies. In rage, Romeo kills Tybalt to avenge the death of his best friend, and instantly becomes a fugitive of the law and runs away. The prince shows up at the scene and is not happy because Mercutio was one of his relatives that is now dead. Thanks to Romeo, who is now banished from Verona. While Juliet is excitedly contemplating the upcoming events of her wedding night, she gets the news from the nurse about Tybalt dying at the hands of Romeo. She freaks out. Oh 
<laughs> Romeo is freaking out at Friar Lawrence's place. The nurse also pops up to say that Juliet is crying a lot in her room. Basically, everyone's freaking out. <laughs> Friar Lawrence lays down the plan for the next 24 hours. Romeo, go comfort your new wife. Then go to Mantua and lay low. Romeo and Juliet do just as the friar said. Just after Romeo sneaks out of her room, Juliet's parents bring good news. So we know you've been crying a lot, so we decided to cheer you up. You're getting married to Paris on Thursday. No. Fine. If you don't marry him, we're throwing you out in the streets. Juliet meets with the Friar Lawrence, who again has to put together a plan for the two lovebirds, Mission Impossible style. The plan. Juliet, pretend that you're willing to marry Paris. Before bed, take this potion, which will cause your body to appear dead for 42 hours, at which point you will wake up in the tomb. I will send Romeo a letter telling him to come and rescue you from the tomb in secret, when the two of you can escape safely to Mantua. And this is how the plan actually went down. Juliet drinks the poison. Juliet plays dead. Juliet's parents find her dead and cry. Juliet's parents bury her in a tomb with her cousin Tybalt. Friar Lawrence sends letter with his friar friends. Letter does not make it to Romeo because of the plague, and they won't let the messenger into the town because they're afraid that the messenger has it. Romeo's servant hears word without knowing about the plan and runs off to tell Romeo. Romeo's servant tells Romeo that Juliet is dead. Romeo is sad. Romeo does not think. Romeo buys poison. Romeo goes to the Capulet's tomb where Juliet lays. Paris is there being sad too. Romeo kills Paris. Romeo enters the tomb. Wow, Juliet looks great for a dead girl. Romeo doesn't question the fact that she doesn't look dead. Because Romeo is a fairly effeminate guy, he spends 46 lines monologuing about killing himself. Romeo drinks poison, kisses her, and dies. Friar Lawrence enters the tomb and sees Romeo dead. Juliet wakes up. Oh, man. Friar Lawrence decides Juliet should become a nun now. Juliet doesn't like this plan. Friar Lawrence hears a sound and leaves. Because she has literally no options left in life other than becoming a prostitute or a nun, she takes his dagger and kills herself. People gather around to find out, and the friar probably thought to himself, that did not go as planned. In the end, the friar explains the whole thing. The prince arrives to explain to the families, this is why we can't have nice things. The two rival families put their differences aside, make peace, and promise to make golden statues of Romeo and Juliet. The end.